history inside a nutshell. The show where we sail into our port of call discussing maritime history. On the 15th of April 1912, over 1,500 people lost their lives following the sinking of the RMS Titanic. It was one of the greatest peaceful maritime disasters in history and it changed the lives of 710 survivors. One of these survivors was the widows of newly wedded couples who were married, engaged or honeymooners. 13 couples were on their honeymoon, with three of them expecting children. One person from these 13 couples was Mary Eloise Hughes Smith, who, along with her husband, was travelling from Egypt to West Virginia to get back home following a surprise. However, what should have been a honeymoon of dreams turned into one of nightmares, resulting in a loss of life. This is the story of Mary Eloise Hughes Smith. Mary Eloise Hughes Smith, or to Eloise in the family, was born on the 7th of August 1893 in West Virginia. Born as the eldest of two children, Eloise was a descendant of Scottish immigrants who moved to Canada and West Virginia. Her family was a well-known political family as her father was a congressman and a member of the House of Representatives. On Wednesday the 7th of February 1912, Eloise married Lucian Philip Smith, whom she had met during her deputante reception at the Willard Hotel. Lucian was descended from a wealthy family who made fortunes from coal mines in Pennsylvania. It's considered a whirlwind romance, having only met a month before. Following the wedding ceremony, the couple had a global honeymoon which began in New York when the couple travelled on the White Star Liner, the Olympic. While they were sailing on the liner, the Olympic lost a propeller blade about 750 miles off the Newfoundland coast. Despite the damage, the Olympic reduced her speed and once she had arrived in Southampton, she returned to Belfast for prepares. The Smiths were visiting Egypt when Eloise discovered she was two months pregnant. Hoping to return to Virginia in time for the birth, the couple had a difficult decision on which liner they should board to New York on the first stage back home. It was a choice between either the Cunard liner, the Lusitania, or White Star's newest ship, the Titanic. Lucian and Eloise purchased tickets for the Titanic in Monte Carlo. While purchasing their tickets, Eloise made a humorous remark, saying to the ticket purser, We were aboard the Olympic when she lost her propeller. Let us hope that this time the ship doesn't sink. The Smiths boarded the Titanic at Cherbourg, and alongside them, more first-class passengers boarded, including John Jacob Astor IV and his wife Madeline, who were waiting with them while the Titanic was docking in port. However, the Titanic was too big to dock, so passengers were ferried on the Normatic before boarding the ship. On Sunday, April 14th, 1912, the Smiths died in the a la carte restaurant on B Deck with several more first class passengers and Captain Edward John Smith in their company. Eloise recorded later that although the gathering or party was in his honour, the captain did not seem to particularly gay, or in other words, he didn't look too happy. Before 9pm, the couple retired to the adjoining reception room for coffee and to hear the Titanic's orchestra play. At 10.30pm, she retired to her cabin. Titanic hit the iceberg at 11.40pm, Eloise was still in her cabin. 
She felt the collision but she wasn't alarmed. She woke up a second time when she noticed that the engines had stopped. Lucian, who was in the Café Parisian playing a game of bridge, returned to the cabin to inform Eloise, we are in the north and have struck an iceberg. It does not amount to anything, but will probably delay us a day getting into New York. However, as a matter of form, the captain has ordered all ladies on deck. However, there is a second version of Eloise's story after the collision. The second version goes that when Eloise retold her story to her nephew, she woke up when she realised the engines had stopped and got out of her bed to investigate. She met Lucien in the hallway from their cabin after he left the Café Parisian. He took her back to the cabin where he said the same words to Eloise from the first version. Which version is true, we might never know. But what we do know was that Eloise dressed up for a precautionary evacuation that was about to occur. She put on heavy clothing, high top shoes and two coats. Eloise also picked up two possessions that meant a lot to her, including a diamond ring that Lucien bought with her while they were staying in Paris. While dressing, Lucien looked at his wife, smiling and eating an apple. But he thought that seeing Eloise putting on lots of layers was amusing. He said, Sweetheart, we've only been married since February, you know. I could not afford to have such a new wife get a cold. In response, Louise said in a serious tone, Lucian, you know that the boat has struck and is sinking. Lucian then said, I don't think she's sinking, but it is better that you should be near the lifeboat in case anything does happen. When they had left their cabin, the Smiths went onto the Titanic's gymnasium on the boat deck. But after a while, Lucien led Eloise to the port side of the boat deck where lifeboat number 8 was being lowered. But Eloise wouldn't go. Despite Lucien's urges, he attempted her to place in the lifeboat by lifting her over the upper edge of the lifeboat. Still, Eloise protested and wrapped her arms around his neck. Another man tried to get into the lifeboat, but Lucien pushed him away with one hand. Lucien gave in, but by the time he did, the ship had already begun listing and the water was running up to the bow. Then, the couple rushed to lifeboat number six, where, not wanting to be separated again, she approached Captain Smith, asking if there was a seat for Lucien on the lifeboat. In response, Captain Smith shouted through his microphone, Women and children first. Accepting his fate, Lucian said to the captain, I will see that she gets in the boat. Then he turned to Eloise where he said, I never expected to ask you to obey, but this is the one time you must. It is only a matter of form to have women and children first. The boat is thoroughly equipped and everyone on her will be saved. Eloise gave in and climbed into the lifeboat. When the lifeboat hit the surface of the ocean, Eloise said she looked up the deck and saw Lucien standing against the rail, smiling while waving his hand and then raising his cap. I waved back, but my heart was breaking, and a minute after some men in the lifeboat pulled me back into my seat and held me there, for I must have tried to jump from the boat. For an hour we rode away from the Titanic, and I watched it settle and list most crazily as we went. I could see my husband. Sometimes he was helping to fill a lifeboat with women. Sometimes he went back to the old place at the rail where he left me, and he would stand for a minute waving his hat toward me. When the Titanic sank at 2.20am, Eloise became frenzied and called to row back to find Lucien. She couldn't do much else except hear the cries of people drowning in the cold water. Lifeboat number 6 reached the Carpathia at 8.30am. Even when she boarded the Cunard liner and possibly in a hysterical condition, Eloise didn't believe the Titanic sank and didn't believe Lucien had perished. However, the realisation kicked in when she scanned each lifeboat on board on the Carpathia's deck. In November 1912, Eloise gave birth to Lucien after his father. 
Eloise remarried in 1914 to another Titanic survivor and banker Robert William Staniel. They likely met on the Titanic and Robert was the one who helped Eloise disembark the Carpathia. Robert became a good stepfather to Lucian and in the early days of their courtship and marriage he was in love with Eloise and the pair were happy. However, they divorced in 1923. Eloise then married a final time in the same year before divorcing again in 1930. Eloise died on the 3rd of May 1940, aged 46, from heart failure. Interestingly, on her death certificate, Eloise recorded her marital status as widowed instead of divorced, and when writing her husband's name, the certificate put the name Lucian P. Smith. Although Eloise's story could have continued in greater detail, there wasn't enough time to include everything. If you would like to know more about Eloise's story, there is a book called Gilded Tragedy, written by Brandon Whitened. It is an excellent read and one of the highest recommendations. I have also interviewed Brandon last year for my Titanic documentary over on my main YouTube channel. If you would like to have a look and watch the video to know more about Eloise's story as well, I will leave a link in the description box below and in the cards above. If you enjoyed enjoyed this week's episode, please subscribe for more historical content. Until next time, this has been History Inside a Nutshell, Departing from the Docks. Thank you so much for all of your support and enjoy the rest of your voyage.